feedback from you about issues that you might have or might foresee having with the media in whatever case. And I'm stretching into social media as well because it's one of my big things at the moment. Okay. Does anybody speak Latin and can correct me that? So I don't know if I've got it right at the beginning. I don't know how to decline the word for teaching in Latin. So I'm guessing, for those that don't mean this, it's teacher beware or seize the day, obviously. Uh, this is what I was told when the decision was made um, to go ahead with Prince Kim Yong uh, And I'm going to name drop and say who it was by. It was by uh, the corporate director, if you please. That's what she told me. I agreed. I am. <laughs> Uh, she said that. <coughs> she said that. I'm getting political already, aren't I? <laughs> Somebody else said it as well, no. She said that. Okay. She didn't say that. <laughs> I said that. Okay. Um, no animals were harmed in the making of anything. <laughs> sure I, I, I will definitely say. And I was told that by various people, including obviously the people that are there to protect me in my role as head teacher, uh, lawyers, uh, press agencies, Kirklees who were brilliant throughout whatever I might say, Kirklees were brilliant throughout, very supportive. I was told that <laughs> by the head teacher at Educate in Essex, the Goddard, who was again tremendous support. Uh, I found them delightful people, I must confess. And they told me that. It's the one piece of advice I really haven't acted on. Um, and it took me a long, long while to realize that what I say, mindful of the fact that I never had signed up for the celebrity part of it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you into a secret here. When they came and did the commissioning filming for the program, they honed in on seven or eight kids in particular, most of whom appeared in the final, appeared in the final cuts of the program, and two or three key staff who, who I had basically said, those are the people to go and film. And they went, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when they showed me the first three programmes, and it was basically the Johnny Mitchell show, I said, whoa, hang on a minute. I signed up for this on the basis that the school would look brilliant, and the profile of the area would go up, and Jewsbury would look like this beautiful 21st century new town. Uh, and, and you would be focusing on these charismatic people. And they, they basically turned around and said, yeah, but you, you know, you, you're quite charismatic yourself, so we want to make it about you. So I didn't sign up for this particularly. I'm quite happy it happened, because it's had a lot of corollary benefits, which has been great. But one thing I didn't do, is keep my, keep my nose out of people's business, unfortunately. And one of the consequences of being on national television, being watched sometimes by upwards of four million people, which is a scary thought, everybody, uh, especially when you're sitting there with your wife watching every Sunday morning, she's going, I can't believe you just picked your nose on telly. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't picking my nose, I was just cleaning something away. That's when I flipped it across the room. And she, uh, that, she, that she nailed the point, really. But I can't help myself saying things that are controversial. And I, I, as a head teacher, maybe I should know better. But at the end of the day, do we not tell our kids pretty much every day to stand up for yourselves? Do we not tell them to say what they think in a polite and, shall we say, courteous and respectful manner? But do we not ask them to express opinions? Do we not ask them to be resilient? Do we not ask them to be independent? I do. And sometimes I get knocked back. Some of my colleagues say, you let them speak too freely. You let them do this. You let them do that. I explain what the business of education is about as far as I'm concerned, okay? So I can't avoid doing that. And the other thing, and I have tried to act on this, is remember the day job. Where should I be today? Obviously, they in my school. I've got trusted deputies, assistant heads, and lots and lots of other fabulous professionals who mean that I don't need to be there at all, most of the time. <laughs> I could work from home, and the school would run perfectly well. My, my job is three quarters done, that school, in terms of the vision is there, the values are there. However, I am there as their leader, and I have to remember the day job, which is why I'm going to do a cover at one o'clock. <laughs> Rarely cover, yeah, whatever. I'm still in the union, you know. But this is what I thought, and this is where I'm going to stop the presentation a little bit and just talk about, and, and I want some people to interact with me here, so please don't be scared. But um, can anybody tell me what they feel when they walk through the door of the building where they work? You may work in a school all the time, you may work in other places, but be involved in schools. Can somebody tell me the, the overriding feeling that they, that, they, that they sense as they walk through the door to start their day of work? Somebody tell me. Yes? Love. Love. You just go, love. <laughs> <laughs> tell, me, tell me what you say to yourself. I say that. I'm great. Right. Anybody else? Come on. What's going to happen today? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I'm so glad you said that because I'm gonna, I'm, that's exactly the tale I'm going to. You said about the buzz. You, yeah. yeah. I hope we all feel that. And if we don't, 
don't do it anymore, please do something else, because she's selling the kids short. And we know that, we tell ourselves that all the time. My wife gets it, she works two days a week. She's tired, she's been teaching a long, long time, she's raised three children, she works phenomenally hard at home. I'm lazy, clearly, all right? So it's all about the other kids, it's not about my family. Um, but she wakes up on the morning on the Mondays and Thursdays when she has to go to work and says, <coughs> I'll say, what's up here, Elizabeth? Um, and she'll say, I wonder what could go wrong today. <laughs> and that's what she tells herself. Now, she, she, she's mindset, isn't she? she? She's got herself into a rut. What I wake up and say, because ah, I'm always blue-eyed and bushy-tailed when I wake up in the morning, I'm not in the slightest bit difficult to get up. Um, but I, the first question I ask myself when I'm scoffing down my brown flakes with silly skin and milk is, um, what, what could go right today? What could be brilliant today? What will be brilliant today? And that's what I tell myself. And it's all psycho babble at the end of the day. But it's about giving yourself a positive mindset. And I, I hope I don't break that. Like that. <laughs> okay? You've got to look at what might be positive there. Because if you don't walk in there grimming with confidence, buzzing with excitement, even if you know it's going to be a crap day because something's happening, you're having a meeting with a parent that you've been dreading for weeks, and they're going to come in and they're going to start shouting at you and they're going to start you know, the spit's going to be coming from them, the veins popping up on their forehead, or whatever. What can I do to make that person walk out of there, eating out of the palm of my hand and saying, what a wonderful, wonderful man you are, and I love your school. Right? What can you do to do that? So, the same principles apply to that beast which needs to be tamed, the media. Okay? These are a few of the things that I would suggest to anybody who, when they are talking to the media, some of which I follow, some of which I don't follow, or didn't follow, but now try to follow. <coughs> it's really, really important that if I'm telling you how you would deal with the media, and certainly from my experience, albeit a relatively unique one, these are things that we need to do. And I am going to insult the intelligence and read through them, and maybe highlight some of them as well. If you've come across any of them at all, ever, you've been involved in anything, because things happen in schools every day. Schools burn down. Schools have violence happening in them. Uh, schools get closed down, schools get put into special measures. The head teacher is always the poor sod there that has to say, well, yeah, it's not really my fault, I tried. Um, yeah, whatever. The media are, do you know what, really quite nice people. Even uh, Chris Hastings, the uh, political editor and the educational editor of the, Daily, uh, the, the Mail on Sunday and the Daily Mail, he's all right, he's not bad. He's sneaky, he rings you up without going through Channel 4 first and says, uh, hi, yeah, I'm a prospective parent, would like to come and look around this girl. And my response to that is, shit, Chris, I know it's you. <laughs> you rang me last week and I told you I wouldn't speak to you. Oh, well, I thought I'd try it. <coughs> okay? <coughs> but they are just people doing a job. All right, some of them are vicious hacks, all right, but I, I haven't really had any experience of those. But there are things, and I've, I've just remembered, you told me it's up there, so I don't have to keep turning around, sorry. They are, they are there to try and trick you into saying things, obviously. They want sound bites, okay? But you shouldn't be drawn into saying anything that you don't believe. I, I've been, I, I was made an offer this morning, just via email, would I speak to BBC um, Radio 4 about um, teachers uh, being addressed by their first names, which some of you may have heard on the radio on the way in or uh, in, the, in the late releases of the newspapers. Even um, that, they said Christian names. They're, they're Christian names, I do beg your pardon, yeah. Christian names. Yeah. Um, I, 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 fear, I, fear for, um, I fear for a couple of members of my staff who've got rather peculiar Christian names, and I can imagine it being a source of great hilarity for some of our students. Uh, yes, Beelzebub, what would you like? Um, <laughs> but, but again, you know, I, I don't really have an opinion. To be honest, I have opinions on most things. I don't really have an opinion on whether it's right to call teachers by their Christian names or not. You go to a Quaker school, it happens all the time. It happens in a lot of other places. A lot of people balk at the idea of calling kids by their surnames. I call kids by their surnames, but only when I'm trying to be sort of pally and jokey with them. I say, well, stop! What are you doing? And he goes, Thomas, this is this, I know you know. Um, so I, I don't have an opinion about it, so I'm not going to say anything, because I know I'm going to a long-drawn argument with some uh, 1930s history don, or something like that, 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 that actually may not actually still be alive, but will be on the radio, saying you shouldn't do it, okay? Um, don't tell them any secrets. Um, I'm, I'm going to refer to Mr. Steer quite a lot in the course of this presentation. Mr. Steer is good at telling secrets to the press. He's being media trained, right? And he tells them secrets. He tells them all sorts of things. And then he's very, very surprised when it appears in the press. And says, I didn't tell him that, did I? I didn't tell him that, did I? Um, so I have to keep reining him in a little bit. But he's good. It's good value for him. Um, the other thing, and this applies to social media, who's, who's got a professional Facebook or Twitter account or... Involved. I have 
Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, as long as you regulate yourself and you're very, very careful and don't feed the trolls. And I've done it a few times, you know, people have said, Mitchell, you're an idiot. And I've just gone, you're not big an idiot as you. <laughs> why did you do that? <laughs> why? Why? I know why. You've got seven types of stellar and it's out of the Okay. You just can't help yourself sometimes, okay? But if you regulate yourself, if you're not prepared to go and stand in Dewsbury or Huddersfield or whatever it is you are, town centre with a lad here the guy, I think Michael Gove's an arsehole, right? <laughs> then please don't put it on Twitter, please don't put it on Facebook, because people will flap it up, okay? And there's an example of that one, some of you may have heard. Don't tell lies, okay? A member of my staff told a lie. It, was a, it wasn't a big lie, it was a personal lie, it was about an achievement that they'd not achieved. Um, <laughs> um, and I read it in the paper and went, on your CV? <laughs> I didn't think I quite said that. What did you say exactly? It's exactly what they've written down. I said, you didn't do that, did you? No. You never played professional football, did you? No. Uh, and it was in there, and uh, you know, it, it, was, it caused a massive furore. Okay? Um, prepare properly. <laughs> Says he, who's going to do a presentation, forgot most of what he's going to say. But you must prepare properly. If, if you're going to speak to the press, organise it. Make sure that you know what your key messages are. And I was going to give you an example of that as well. Take advice. Uh, something that I'm not very keen on, uh, because clearly I'm arrogant because I'm a head teacher, uh, and that's what I get told all the time. Yeah, I have to do my own thing. I have to be big enough and hard enough to be able to stand up and say what I think. But I have to make sure what the consequences are for every other stakeholder, every other person across the school community and in the school itself. My staff, my students, my parents, uh, my religious elders and things like that because I've got a very diverse community. I've got to be very careful how I plan that. So as soon as he comes up to me and says, what do you think about, uh, for example, I've, I've been asked to quote on the change into the exam timetables next year, possibly because of the impact of Ramadan and the fact that some students will be unduly disadvantaged. And I've also been caught in the crossfire then of some quite extreme views. People say, so what do you think about that? But uh, I'm really not responding to that because I don't like you as a person, I don't respect your views. So if you don't mind leaving me alone. And you have to do that. But I have to make my own opinions about that. Okay? Um, if at all possible, if you've got press and legal advice, then leave it to them. So, sorry, I don't wish to talk to that. Can you contact X at local authority and they'll deal with it for you? Um, the bit about spewing forth the party line is very, very important. I have to constantly remind myself, and I carry a card in my pocket with four bullet points written on it. It's laminated, it's credit card size. And just in case, for some reason, the values that I decided were going to uh, underpin everything uh, ethos based around our school and our community. If I forget them, I can just sort of refer to it and go, oh yeah, that's right, they're decent human beings ready to go out into the world. Yeah, okay. Um, and develop a bank of soundbites. Oh, I've just given you an example of one. Okay. There's a few more things that I think are very, very important. Um, the media are great. Uh, some of you may, may have read, if you're on Twitter and things like that, I write, I write a weekly column for the Jews Reporter. It's, it's, it's a freebie, it takes me about 10 minutes. The most difficult thing to do is actually to think of something that people might want to read about. So I've, gone all, I've done all things from um, talking about people not being able to write, spell and use correct grammar, all the way down to uh, a recent one I did about Anne McGuire and the, the poor year nine student that passed away at our, uh, our school just, be, just before the Easter holidays finished. So, you know, real extremes. But it, what it does is help us keep the profile and the reputation of Fauna Community Academy going and keeping it in people's minds. And it's not done for any selfish reasons, uh, not that the, you know, the BAFTA audience vote finishes today. <laughs> if you haven't already, please do. Um, but you know, obviously I know that the Jews Report, and by extension the Report series and the Yorkshire Post group of newspapers, and indeed some of the other ones around West Yorkshire, will look favourably on us if something bad hits the fan. Because Ofsted are due any time now, and if Ofsted don't give us the outcome that we think we deserve, and they slightly downgrade us, or they tell us that leadership and management's inadequate because Mr. Mitchell's never there, um, then I will need to be able to rely on the people that I forge a relationship with in the press to be able to promote a positive spin. They're on our side already. They think we're wonderful. We're not. We're a school, just like every other school. We do what we can and we do it, we think, really, really well, just like a lot of other schools do. Yeah, we're in that advantageous position, if you like, of being nationally profiled. Okay? Um, avoid coded messages, I think, just stand for itself. Don't, you know, be honest, just be clear. Use language that people can understand. Uh, something else that I'm not always ready for. The bit about doing some freebies is what I've been talking about. You know, uh, come and speak at various things. Do it for nothing. Don't say, I did £250. I'm, I'm, I'm in the public eye now. I think you need to start paying. Um, everything, that, everything that we earn 
uh, Michael, Matthew, and myself, and a couple of others do, going to conferences and going to things. Anything that we do get goes straight back into the school. And, you know, we've had upwards of about £120,000 in the school since September edition, maybe from various people doing various things, which is amazing. I right, can solve a lot of funding issues. So my advice, go and tell it as quickly as possible. <laughs> okay? Have a trusted bank of people to talk to. That's what we decided we would do. We speak to three people every week. We speak to a chap at the Yorkshire Post, the editor of the Jewish Reporter, and we talk to the Guardian every week, and we just let them know what's going on and what our thoughts are on all the current education issues of the day. And then as a result, if it's something that's really positive that can come out of it, they will name us and use us as a quote. If not, they will just use us as a bank of experts that they've spoken to and incorporated them in their articles. And they might just mention Thornhill at some point, just keeps it in the public eye all the time, so that we know that we're still having this lasting legacy, if you like, from the documentary. Um, <laughs> says, says he, be measured, be concise, be clear and be honest, but not controversial, and don't do things off the cuff. And the bit I want to talk to you about a little bit is this message house. I don't know if anybody uh, who works in, in the media or has worked in media departments in schools or, or knows about this sort of stuff has ever come across this. This is the simplest way to make sure that nothing that you say to the press or on TV or on the radio can ever be misconstrued. You have this message house, okay? The one that we decided for us was that, okay? Our, our key message when we talked about anything, if somebody said, what do you think of the Education Secretary? The answer to that question would be, Thornhill Community Academy prides itself on brilliant standards. Uh, we have great outcomes and they're increasing over time. We are obviously rated good and we want to make sure that students come out as decent human beings. Yes, but what do you think about the Education Secretary? <laughs> oh, anything that he can do to help on that journey would be fabulous. No, but what do you think about him? I'm not saying anything, okay? We have our sub-messages sub as you can see there and then we have some meat on the bones. And obviously it's a lot bigger than that, but the very bare basics of it is that is what our messages are to the press and to the media. And they'll say, yes, yes, we know you've had media training. What do you really think? And that's what Michael Stereo thinks. We <laughs> 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 hand up if you didn't read about that in the press. <laughs> We had a bit of Gary, and I need to know where my demographics come from there. He said that uh, on stage, having picked up on behalf of the Academy of the Royal Television Society World for Best Factual Series, I wasn't there. <laughs> because I think in the press the following day, rather than that comment, it would have been when he got to, I would like to dedicate this award to Michael Gove, I would have been in the press for the biggest distance rugby tackle. Because <laughs> I know what he was going to come out with as soon as he got to dedicate, and I would have torn across the room and absolutely made mince meat out of him. Okay? And he had a very rough week after that. And I, I faced calls for him to be sacked. Uh, I had people ringing me up. I had some parents who were disgruntled. What staggered me, what absolutely staggered me, and I didn't think I would get, was uh, I got lots and lots of people from within education at senior level ringing up and saying, good on him. <laughs> You've disappointed me slightly. What he should have said was this. Same message. Okay? It's nice and polite, isn't it? And I'm only using it as an example because that's what I said. Okay? I was asked whether I was a fan of Michael Gove and I just went, no. But then again, blah, 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 and qualified it. Michael Gove knows what I think about him because he contacted me personally by telephone, which is a bit of a surprise to say. You were not very controversial when you were asked my, uh, your opinion on curriculum reforms. And I said, no, because I prefer to keep my counsel if that's all right, Mr. Gov. Kind sir. <laughs> um, so it's, it's all about managing your expectations, knowing what you are up against. At the end of the day, we are not experts in the field of the media. We are not experts in the field of broadcasting. We've had, okay, albeit a brilliant experience and a, and a wonderful sort of snapshot of what being high profile means we are by no means experts and we can be tripped up like that by a half decent journalist is my opinion. Don't have to even be very talented journalists. I wanted to talk a bit about what the programme's done for us because a lot of people do ask me all the time. Um, I'm pleased to report that normally our, our pan is 180 each year, we can fit 900 into the school. Uh, normally we get 135 to 140, our current number sits at 193, so technically I would be um, turning 13 kids down on appeal, 
which is, doesn't sit very easily with me because we want to be all embracing. So maybe we could go down the uh, same river as university places and just keep going, I'll have 700 if they apply. <laughs> uh, our staff recruitment is up massively because uh, obviously I'm sure you all understand that the more kids you get in, the more cash, you know, an extra 40 students this year will mean the best part of £200,000 on my budget, uh, which has enabled me already to, to, to bring in seven more staff and still have money left over, and the new building and all sorts. Our staff recruitment, as I say, is up. Uh, I think, and I don't know if you agree, I mean, anybody from Dewsbury particularly, or just next door to Dewsbury, I think the reputation of the town is better. I mean, it's not perfect, is it? I mean, Dewsbury's got a lot of problems, but at the end of the day, it's my own town, and I'm very proud of it. Um, but most people, if you say Dewsbury, and specifically Thornhill, people will say, ah, is that where Educating Oxford was? Oh, that was a great program, wasn't it? Rather than, I don't know where Shannon lives. Or, is that where the terrorist bombers were? Oh. I think there's been an appreciation more widely across the country, and certainly from feedback that I've received from various people within and outside education, that the job that teachers do, and people working in schools do, is a tough one, and they have to have lives with the patients of saints. I think it's important. Uh, I hope again an appreciation of how wonderful kids can be. Because, you know, you can't lie and say that sometimes you, you, you would like to hit a kid over the head with a spade and put them in a box and hide them in a cupboard for a couple of years. You would sometimes because they wind you up to such an extent. But you don't, you just sit down and say, now that's not the appropriate way to behave, is it? Now, <laughs> sit down. Okay? But kids are brilliant. Kids make you laugh every day. Don't cry. Um, but I think the biggest thing that's happened, there have been life affirming opportunities for some of our kids, which is at the end of the day what we are in the business for. We didn't expect any of the life affirming opportunities that I'm going to talk about. But, you know, Ryan, the latte drinking 40 year old trapped inside a 13 year old's body that you may be aware of, has got an agent. <laughs> <laughs> He's appeared in a film. I'm guessing it's like C-list film. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's um, Stanley Kubrick or anything like that, uh, um, um, James Cameron or anything like that. But uh, he's appeared in a film and he got paid handsomely for it. You know, I, I could have had a month off work for what he got paid for his big part in his film, which is ridiculous. Uh, that's not a lot, by the way. Um, the Choir, I'm sure you're aware, opened the National Television Awards with Sam Bailey and Michael Bolton, which was just an amazing experience. We were all sat there crying. Yeah, we're, we're sat there, all the, you know, we're all sat there crying, and the, the, the kids were there singing their little hearts out, and the, the cameras fortunately skimmed away from us and didn't. But we're like, oh, oh, you're my children. <laughs> Even Lynn Marsden, the pastoral lady in year seven who cries all the time, she's like, shut up, you softy. Um, but we've made we've made appearances. The kids have made appearances. At Alan Titchmarsh show, <laughs> uh, Musharraf went on um, um, Radio Five Live with Matthew Burton. These are all amazing things. Bailey Hill, uh, I should have done my eyebrows off, sir. Um, <laughs> she, she, she was given a £750 uh, makeup and beauty package, and uh, she's had experts come in and show how to apply makeup discreetly. <laughs> can, I confirm, can I confirm that that wasn't money well spent because it hasn't worked? <laughs> She's a delightful, delightful child. Um, and, you know, it's absolutely brilliant. We've won lots of awards, and, that, and I'm going to say it again, because I've got a captive audience at home. It's the BAFTAs on Sunday. Make sure you watch it. It's live on TV on BBC One, 8 o'clock. We're up for the best factual series, which we won't win, and the audience award, which we won't win. We still want you to vote online for the audience award, please. And if you don't, every email address that you've got, even if you've got 13 of them, you can do it once for each. <laughs> Um, but it's just, it's just amazing. It has been an absolute roller coaster for us. And I suppose if you haven't seen it or you want to see it again, you want to get your tissues out. No, if you went all the way. Shall I go back? It's because I can't bear to see it again. I don't want to it actually. It needs to be on the slideshow, doesn't it? Can't get these days. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Click on it now. You ready? <laughs> So it's like one, and it's only because I watched the King's Speech quite recently, right? Oh. One thing he does, right? When the, because it's a very similar thing to you, and you just can't get the words out. But one, one thing he does do is he makes him listen to some music, right? And then when he's listening to the music, he gets him to do it again. Okay. 
So you, have you got your form here? Yeah? No. Mm, right, just put it into mine, I'll put it to off the music on. Oh, yeah. Right. Right, ready? Yeah, that's it. Yeah? Okay, that's right. One, two, three. The moment when after many years of hard work and a long... Uh, uh, a long... Uh, um, Come on. I want to thank you. I want to thank you today for letting me speak in front of all of you. I want to ex especially thank Mr. Burton for for helping me overcome my stammer. This school has helped me improve so much that I do not have enough words to tell you all how. I really am going to miss the school, the teachers the students and just the whole and just the whole high school environment. It's good. I don't have a dream to work at a call center or else I would be fired the uh, same day. I really want to thank you all for listening and I hope the best for all of you. For all my the University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.